bone. A bone is an organ. It contains different types of tissues. There is bone or osseous tissue, which is the predominant tissue. But it also has nervous tissue, uh, cartilage we talked about, fibrous connective tissue. There are muscle cells, epithelial cells, <clears throat> and blood vessels. So we can look at the structure of a bone at least three different levels. We can look at the gross structure, the microscopic structure, and the chemical structure of bone. We'll start with the gross anatomy of a bone. Gross, ana gross anatomy <coughs> gives us two different types of bone tissue. There is a compact form of bone and a spongy form of bone. Now, a bone as an organ is going to contain both compact and spongy bone. So these are not different bones, they're different uh, organizations of the bone tissue within a bone. So compact bone is a dense, usually in the outer layer on every bone, it appears smooth and solid. You look at a bone in the lab, what you'll be looking at is the outside of compact bone. Spongy bone, on the other hand, has a more honeycomb shape. There are small needle-like structures or flat pieces of bone called trabeculi. And the open spaces between those trabeculi are going to be filled with marrow, either red marrow if it is making blood, or yellow marrow if it is storing fat. So here you can see this bone, this is the end of a long bone outside surrounded by compact bone and then inside is this spongy bone down here we have a marrow cavity we'll talk about that in a little while uh, but so most bones are going to have some spongy and some compact bone in them uh, short irregular and flat bones have very thin plates of spongy bone covered by compact bone and the compact bone is sandwiched between connective tissue membranes. Uh, the periosteum would cover the outside of the compact bone. Endosteum would cover the inside portion of the compact bone. Marrow is scattered throughout the spongy bone. There is no defined marrow cavity like we'll see in a long bone. Uh, hyaline cartilage would cover the area of bone that is part of a movable joint. So here's a flat bone from our skull. We can see the layer of compact here and here and the spongy bone in between. If we magnify that, you see there are a lot of trabeculi, uh, a lot of holes that are here and they would normally be <coughs> marrow in those cavities. A long bone is a little different. Long bones have a shaft called the diaphys uh, and it ends are called epithesis. They also have membranes on them. So the diaphys is a tubular shaft forming the long axis of the bone. It's compact bone surrounding a cavity, the central medullary cavity, because that's where uh, marrow is found. And in adults, that's typically filled with yellow marrow, uh, although during development, it may be red marrow when we first are develop, uh, when we are growing. The ends of that tubular shaft, the diaphys, are called the epiphyses. Uh, they have compact bone externally, uh, just like we saw earlier, uh, but underneath that compact bone is mostly spongy bone. There's going to be articulate cartilage covering the places where these bones form joints. Uh, in between the diaphys and the epiphyses is a structure called the epiphyseal line. That epiphyseal line is the remnant of a structure called the epiphyseal plate, which was a cartilage structure that was allowed that helped that bone grow lengthwise. So the epiphyseal plate allows for growth of the bone to get the long bones to get longer. And when that growth stops, that epiphyseal plate becomes an epiphyseal line. So here is our diaphys our marrow cavity, generally filled with red marrow. Our epiphyses, this would be the proximal epiphyses because it's closer to 
the body it would have compact bone on the outside, articulate cartilage on the very outside, the spongy bone in the center, and then uh, a line here, which was used to be cartilage, the epiphyseal plate, and is now epiphyseal line. There are two types of membranes, the periosteum and the endosteum associated with long bones. Periosteum is a white double layer membrane covering the external surface, except where there are joints. Uh, it's got a fibrous layer. The outer layer has uh, dense, irregular connective tissue consisting of Sharpie's fibers that are going to secure that uh, to the bone matrix. There is an osteogenic layer, which is the inner layer that is right up against the bone. It has the osteogenic stem cells, which will give rise to most of the different bone cells we'll talk about. Uh, this membrane also contains many nerve fibers and blood vessels continuing through the shaft through nutrient foramen openings. And it serves as an anchoring point for tendons and ligaments. The endosteum is the delicate connective tissue membrane covering the internal bone surface. It covers trabeculi of spongy bone, lines canals that go through compact bone. Like the periosteum, it contains osteogenic cells that can differentiate into other bone cells. Periosteum here, uh, Sharpie's fibers, and endosteum would be internally. So <clears throat> the places where blood is being formed is known as hematopoietic tissue, also called red marrow, found in the trabecular cavities of spongy bones and the dipole of flat bones, such as the sternum. In newborns, uh, medullary cavities also have red marrow, but as we become adults, that red marrow is uh, replaced by yellow marrow, uh, except in the head of the femur and the humerus. Uh, most of the hematopoiesis that goes on are in flat bones, dipole, and regular bones, such as the hip, Yellow marrow can convert to red if a person does become anemic. So bones also have numerous markings on them. Those markings are the sites of muscle, ligament, and tendon attachment on external surfaces. They are areas that are involved in joint formation or conduits for blood vessels and nerves. Three types of markings would be projections, depressions, and openings. Uh, projection would be an alt outward bul bulge of the bone, usually due to increased stresses, stresses being a good thing, they're pulls from muscles or modifications for joints. Uh, depressions would be bowl or groove-like cutouts that serve as passageways for vessels and nerves, play a role in joints, and there are a number of holes or canals in bone that serve as passageways for blood vessels and nerves. I won't walk you through this image, but it is in your book, figure 6.2. So we have tuberosities, crests, trochanters, lines, tubercles, epicondyle, spine, and processes. Some of these will be important as we go through each individual bone in the next couple of chapters. We also have heads, facet, condyles, grooves, fissures, foramens. So now let's look microscopically at the bone. So we took a, a look at the big picture of the bone. Microscopically or histologically, there are five major cell types. Each one is specialized to form the uh, same basic cell type. We have osteogenic cells, osteoblasts, osteocytes, bone lining cells, and osteoclasts. So the osteogenic cells are also referred to as the osteoprogenitor cells or bone stem cells. They are mitotically active stem cells in the periosteum and the endosteum. When they are stimulated, they're going to go uh, down a differentiation line get more mature, become osteoblasts or bone lining cells. As all stem cells, when a cell divides, 
one of those stem cells will remain a stem cell, so we don't run out of osteogenic cells, and the other cell will continue the differentiation pathway to become a blast or a bone lining cell. The blasts are bone forming cells. They're going to secrete unmineralized bone matrix, and that unmineralized bone matrix is called osteoid. It's made up of collagen and calcium binding proteins. Collagen is about 90% of bone protein. Osteoblasts are still actively mitotic. They still can divide. So we get a progenitor cell that differentiates into an osteoblast. The osteoblast begins secreting that matrix, those calcium binding proteins and collagen. When those osteoblasts mature, they become osteocytes and they become anchored in the lacunae and they don't divide anymore. But they are still working to maintain matrix and act as when stress or strain sensors are activated. So they respond to mechanical stimuli such as increased force or bone or weightlessness if that's the case. Communicating information to osteoblasts and osteoclasts, which we'll see in a few minutes, but osteoclasts destroy bone. Uh, and that will be part of a process known as bone remodeling that we'll talk about at the end of this chapter. Bone lining cells are flat cells on the bone surfaces. They probably help maintain matrix along with the osteocytes. On the external bone surface, the lining cells are called periosteal cells. On the internal surfaces, they're called endosteal cells. So that other type of osteo is the osteoclast. They come from the same hematopoietic stem cell as macrophages. They do a job similar to macrophage, but they work on bone specifically. Uh, they are involved in bone resorption, so we break down the bone. When they are active, they are located in depressions called resorption bays. Cells have a ruffle border. Ruffles help to increase surface area so that the enzymes on their surface can be used to degrade bone. Uh, also helps to seal off the area from the surrounding matrix. So we've got osteoblast to an osteocyte. Here we are growing bone. Here we are maintaining bone. And then from a different lineage, a different kind of stem cell, we get the osteoclast, which is involved in breaking down bone. These are building, this one's breaking down. Compact bone uh, is also called lamellar bone. And the organization of that involves the osteon, canals and caniculi, and the interstitial and circumferential lamella. The osteon is also known as the aversion system, traditionally known as the aversion system, uh, for the anatomist who described it. So that aversion system or osteon is the structural unit of a compact bone. It's an elongated cylinder that runs parallel to the long axis of the bone. It's like a tiny weight-bearing pillar. Uh, an osteon cylinder consists of several rings of bone matrix called lamellar. And the lamellae contain collagen fibers that run in different directions in adjacent rings, which is very important for bones to be able to withstand stress and resist twisting. Uh, and there are bone salts found between those collagen fibers. So here is one osteon made up of, in this case, we see three layers drawn uh, in the central canal. Canals and caniculi, the central canal, also known as the aversion canal, runs through the core of the osteon, contains blood vessels and nerve fibers. And then coming out from the sides are, no, are perforating canals or Volkmann's canals. They are lined with endosteum. They occur at right angles to the central canal. And they are connections for blood vessels and nerves of the periosteum, the medullary cavity, and the central canal. Lacunae, we've talked about before. They are the small cavities that contain the mature osteocytes. There are hair-like canals that connect lacunae one to another and the central canal called caniculi. Osteoblasts secrete bone matrix, maintain contact with each other. 
uh, osteocytes through projections within uh, and gap junctions uh, between these caniculi. And when the matrix hardens, the cells become trapped and it forms these caniculi so that communication between osteocytes of the osteon can, and movement of nutrients and waste can occur throughout the life of the bone. So the interstitial lamellae are lamellae that are not part of an osteon. They fill gaps uh, when osteons are formed. Others are remnants of osteons that have been cut out by bone remodeling. And the circumferential lamellae are just below the periosteum, su superficial to the endosteum. Those are the layers extending around the entire surface of the diaphys, and they are very important for helping bones, to, uh, long bones, to resist twisting. Spongy bone appears poorly organized when you look at it, especially compared to the uh, very nicely organized osteon structure we just looked at. But in reality, those are organized along lines of stress uh, that help bones to resist pushing and pulling in different directions. Tuberculi, like cables on a suspension bridge, give strength to the bone. We don't see the osteons, but the trabeculi contain irregularly arranged lamella and osteocytes interconnected by caniculi. Uh, capillaries in the endosteum are going to supply nutrients to the spongy bone. So again, it doesn't look as neat and pretty as an osteon, but there is uh, similar structures within that. Chemically, bone is made up of organic and inorganic parts. The organic parts we've been talking about a little bit, the osteogenic cells, the osteoblasts, osteocytes, bone lining cells, osteoclasts when they're present, and, uh, and osteoid. That osteoid makes up about a third of organic matrix is secreted by osteoblasts. It is ground substance and collagen fibers, and the collagen fibers in particular give high tensile strength and flexibility to the bone. This organic portion of the bone is what we don't have preserved in the lab. So our preserved bones are uh, the inorganic portion, and they are not flexible, and they do not have the great tensile, tensile strength that a fresh bone would have. The resilience is due to sacrificial bonds in or between collagen molecules that stretch and break to dissipate energy and prevent fractures. Uh, those bonds will reform if we don't get additional trauma. The inorganic components include the hydroxyapatites or mineral salts. This makes up about 65% of bone mass. This is mostly calcium phosphate in and around collagen fibers. This is where we get hardness of the bone and resistance to compression. And this is the part of the bone that is left in the preserved bones that we have in the lab. Bone is, is half as strong as steel in resisting compression, uh, but it's as strong as steel in resisting tension. Bone lasts long after death because of its mineral composition, and there are things contained within those structures that can help reveal uh, information to paleontologists about diet and other things about ancient people. All right, we're going to stop there.